Shalom, shalom. Thank you for tuning into this podcast. We, on this podcast, we speak about faithful healing. Now people in the Gospels came to Yeshua with faith and with courage, sometimes walking long distances, going through hard trials to come to where Yeshua was at that point, asking him to come and heal their loved ones or their own bodies. And then we look, look, look on the response that Yeshua had when they asked him as well. So we are reading from Matthew 9, verse 12 and 13. Matthew 9, verse 18, up until 35 as well. Matthew 9, verse 12. But when Yeshua heard that, he said unto them, They that be whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. But go ye and learn what that meaneth. That's verse 13. I will have mercy and not sacrifice, for I am not come to call the righteous but sinners to repentance. Verse 18 and onward. While he spake these things unto them, behold, there came a certain ruler and worshipped him, saying, My daughter is even now dead. But come and lay thy hand upon her, and she shall live. And Yeshua arose and followed him. And so did his disciples. And behold, a woman, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood twelve years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, If I may touch, but touch the, his, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. But Yeshua turned him, around, turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort, thy faith hath made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. And when Yeshua came into the ruler's house and saw the minstrels and the people making a noise, he said unto them, Give place, for the maid is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. But when the people were put forth, he went in and took her by the hand, and the maid arose. And the fame hereof went abroad into all that land. And when Yeshua departed thence, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was come into the house, the blind men came to him. And Yeshua saith unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this? They said unto him, Yea, Lord. Then touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. And their eyes were opened. Verse, from verse 32. As they went out, behold, they brought to him a dumb man possessed with a devil. And when the devil was cast out, the dumb spake, and the multitudes marveled, saying, It was never so seen in Israel. And from verse 34 to verse 35. But the Pharisees said, He casteth out devils through the prince of the devils. And Yeshua went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Wow, that is so powerful. So, let's start explaining from verse 12 and 13. Here Yeshua says to, to the people that, are, that had, had difficulty to understand why Yeshua spent so much time among the sick and the sinners. Because in, that, in, the, in, in Israel that time, they, they would clearly, there were groups that, like the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes, that had pride and did not extend the word to sinners and sick people. But if we understand God's heart correctly, He wants sinners and sick people to repent and be healed. As it is said then in verse, I'm um, said then that the whole need not a physician. But those who are sick, and I, I will have mercy and not sacrifice, for I am come to call righteous. There, I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Why do you need somebody to heal you if you are not sick? Why do you need need somebody to forgive you if you if you do not have sin, if you are righteous? So, going with this mindset that Yeshua came for the sick and the sinners, let's read the the next the next story. Or the, the, the following story. Here, here a man comes. So, there's certain, it is said that it is a ruler. So, in Israel, it, that he was seen as a ruler. 
So with a ruler, obviously you have respect in the, in the land, but this ruler came and humbled himself to come to a Jew that was not a ruler, that was walking with the, pe with the, with the poor and the sick people. And he, and he heard about this man, about Yeshua healing and casting out devils, raising the dead. And he loved his daughter so much that when she died, he came to him. So I would imagine, he, because he was a ruler, he was rich. And he would have done everything possible to save his daughter. But nothing that any physician did or any, anyone did the time that she was alive helped. She died. So the last option was Yeshua because he raised the dead. And today we see people declare dead on accident scenes or, or when they die in their houses. By the paramedics they are declared dead or by the hospital staff they are declared dead. But here this ruler was not satisfied no way his daughter will be dead will be declared dead he went to the one the only one known in that country that raised the dead his name was yeshua he humbled himself before all the people even though he was a ruler to come to yeshua and it, it didn't matter what the pharisees scribes and sadducees their rumors they spread they spread bad rumors about Yeshua. It doesn't matter what rumors he heard. He went to Yeshua because he heard that Yeshua raised the dead. So, as I mentioned in previous podcasts, he might not have had any evidence in his personal life or that of his family that Yeshua healed any of them. But he heard Yeshua healed others. And today, if my family member is sick, and I only hear about somebody else healing. Am I willing to go that distance so far to search for that person to heal my loved one? Because I am not willing that my loved one will be sick or dead. This is the heart of this ruler. What did Yeshua say? Because this ruler sp um, spent a long time following, um, trying to get a hold of Yeshua. I would believe it would be more than a couple of hours, maybe a day or two, to search out Yeshua, or to send out messengers to seek where Yeshua is. And then he himself went. Remember, as I said before, they did not have any technology that we have today. So he had to go on his foot or on his horse. He had to go to Yeshua. And he said, Yeshua, if you would come and lay your hand upon my daughter, she shall live. And I know that we know about the healing of the centurion that says, only speak a word and, and my servant will be made whole. And Yeshua spoke that word. Here, he, um, this ruler said, if you would come and lay your hand upon her. So the faith that he had was, if, he would, if Yeshua would come with him, lay his hand physically upon his daughter, she would be made well. Yeshua did not, did not reprimand him, did not rebuke him. Yeshua went with him to lay his hand on her. So that was, that's amazing. Yeshua's response was not to say, I'm not going to. Because he saw the faith in this ruler. Yeshua went. And what happened? He came to this house, seeing minstrels, people, people that time hired people to mourn. So these people were trained how to cry, how to make a noise, how to wail and weep because of a loved one that died, especially in a ruler's house. And Yeshua came into this house seeing this, this uproar saying, why are you making this noise? The, the maid is not dead. And, and that, is, that is very interesting for me. He said, she's sleeping. And they laughed him to scorn. But this ruler had the faith to put those minstrels and all those people outside of the house. And so, so this is actually interesting. The, the people that didn't have faith was put outside of the house so that the people that had faith was inside of the house with a dead woman, with a dead girl. Yeshua took her by the hand and she arose. What an amazing miracle. Yeshua has the power to raise the dead. Our Messiah has the power to raise the dead. I want to go to the next story as well. As Yeshua went to this dead to this ruler's house where the dead uh, where her dead daughter where his dead daughter laid a woman that had a flow of blood for many 
years. It's, uh, the Bible says, I had a flow of blood for 12 years. So that means a menstrual flow of blood. Meaning for 12 years, this lady was unclean. No one would have married her. Her parents would have put, maybe put her out of the house because everywhere she went, she was unclean. And because of the traditional laws and the laws of, that is written in, the, in, in the, books, the book of Moses, the five books of Moses, if you touch a woman that is busy menstruating, you must go wash yourself in your clothes and you'll be unclean until evening. And they were unclean every day, every day. She was unclean every day. So it was very hard. So I can imagine she might have been put out of the house. No man would have married her. She had to fend for herself. She had to hide this sickness away from people. Um, she might have seen a lot of physicians, but not get any better and as you sure went past what she said in her heart was amazing if i can only but touch the hem of his garment do you remember the ruler said yeshua if you would come lay your hand upon my daughter she will live she said if i can only but touch his the the rim of his garment the hem of his garment and and remember she knows that she is unclean and pushing through all this crowd following. That she will make every one that she touches unclean. And those people might get angry because now they're unclean. Now they have to go wash in the sea or in, in a pool of water. And their clothes and be unclean until evening. So she said it does not matter in her heart. She would push through this crowd. She, actually, she literally pushed through this crowd. Making everybody she touched unclean. When she came to Yeshua, she was not scared to make Yeshua unclean. She was so desperate for that healing. So desperate. That, that she went through these people, touched the hem of his garment and he healed her. I remember in the pandemic, many churches didn't open because they were afraid to make, to, they were afraid to, for the large church group to become sick. And I remember in a church that, I, church that I was as well, a person said, "I'm." many people actually said, I will not go to the church because I love them. And I do not want to make them sick. But that is so unscriptural. Look at this woman. Um, th those people suffered for a long time with that disease um, that I just spoke to you about. Not this woman, but the people through the pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic. They had to sit at home, be, be sick, um, being tortured by this devil. But this lady said, it, do, it doesn't matter if I touch them. It doesn't matter if they get unclean. I will be healed. And Yeshua healed her. So I remember also a lady that, um, this was actually my wife. She, she, she had all the symptoms of COVID and she she was very sick very sick she vomited she she had body pain she she coughed she had a runny nose she had fevers fever she couldn't sleep because of the torment of this devil but she said within herself I will go to church I will go to this group of people Elohim will heal me God will heal me and Every day for four days, she spoke this within her heart. She cast this devil away. She went to people to pray for her. And she in not being that much afraid for, for, um, for them getting sick. But she wanted to get healed. And guess what? After four days, she was healed. After four days, she was healed. She did not, did not have to go 10 days, 12 days sick. Four days, she was healed. All right, so let's look at the next story. So after the this lady, the, the lady that had the flow of blood for twelve years was healed, after the after the dead daughter of the ruler was raised from the dead, Yeshua's fame was was spread abroad in all that land. So we can see quite some time passed. Um, in verse 26 but from verse 27 the next story occurs 
And when Yeshua departed thence, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. Now these men um, were blind, obviously for them to know that this was Yeshua, a crowd had to pass and they had to ask, Who is this? What is going on? And they said Yeshua, they must have said Yeshua is passing by. And they cried out, Yeshua, son of David, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. What happened was Yeshua kind of ignored them. He went into a house. So that was Yeshua's normal, normal going about. He went to a person of peace's house, stayed there, ate there, ministered there. These two blind men followed him. So Yeshua ignored them. They might have thought that Yeshua did not hear them. And they stood up, being blind, got hold of somebody and followed Yeshua into the house. Into the house. Now, I can believe when Yeshua walked through that, la through that land, when his fame was spread so much that a large crowd followed, followed him. And they had to spend time getting through this crowd, um, asking people to help them to get to Yeshua and the people that helped him must have had the faith that Yeshua will heal these blind men. And these blind men also had faith. And coming to this house, they, they had to cry out and push through this crowd, getting into this house. And then Yeshua said, and when he was come, verse 28, when he was come into the house, the blind men came to him. And Yeshua said unto them, believe ye that I am able to do this. I mean, if they did not believe, why did they go through all that trouble coming to him? So, Yeshua still asked, do you believe that I can do this? And here we see that Yeshua desires faith for healing. Faith to come to him. Faith for healing. What was the blind men's response? They said, yay, Lord. What did Yeshua do? He touched their eyes, saying, according to your faith, be it unto you. And their faith, faith was genuine. And their eyes were opened. Amazing. This is so amazing. Yeshua did not only come to bring healing. And mercy and forgiveness. But faith. With Yeshua's presence in that land. Faith stirred up. And courage and hope stirred up. And this led for the blind to see. The the dead to raise, the unclean to be made clean, and those and the sinners to find find mercy and forgiveness and atonement. Let's look at the next story from verse 32 and onward. As they went out, behold, they brought to him a dumb man possessed with a devil. <coughs> now imagine this. Let's, wait, let's just think about this. A dumb man possessed by a devil. So this man cannot speak. So I don't know how long this man could not speak, but I know that the people that brought him loved him so much that they brought him to Yeshua. And that man had the faith, I believe, and the people that brought Yeshua to him had the faith that if they bring this man to Yeshua, Yeshua would heal him. So the fame, I believe the fame even spread more about Yeshua's healing and, and miracles. So this, so this dumb man, we don't know how far he had to walk, but that time they had to walk to, to get to Yeshua. And when, when they brought the dumb man possessed with the devil to Yeshua, Yeshua cast out the devil. The dumb spake, and the multitude marveled, saying, It was never so seen in Israel. So our Messiah even drives out devils. But you know, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes at that time, they were jealous and they, they spread false rumors that Yeshua was doing these things by the hand of Satan. But Yeshua went, just went through about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Today, if you can imagine what sickness there is, if you know by research what sicknesses there are. Every sickness and every disease Yeshua can heal. Because Yeshua healed at that time among the people there. Now the Bible says as well that Yeshua today, tomorrow and forever the same. Today Yeshua does the same things. 
But what he requires is a willing heart that will grab onto these promises. To come to Yeshua with faith and with hope. Now in Colossians 1 and 2, we see clearly that our faith and our hope can be spoiled through philosophies and doctrines of men. So whatever we watch, whatever we allow to, to enter into our ears, into our hearts, can, can thwart or, or hinder our faith to come to Yeshua. Can hinder the way we understand to come to Yeshua. We know that today that the things we see, the things we think about, neural pathways are formed in our brain. These neural pathways are, it is physical neurons, but it is structured ways of thinking. For example, if you if you would set your alarm every day for 5 a.m. to wake up, after a time you will wake up without that alarm. Because your mind is now structured in thinking this way. The Bible also says we must renew our mind, be transformed by the renewing of your mind, and clothe yourself with a new man created according to God in, in righteousness and all holiness. So let us renew our mind, let us study these healings, and come to Yeshua with faith. Now today Yeshua um, is reached by faith and hope if we come in contact with the Holy Spirit, or a person that is filled with the Holy Spirit, that has faith to pray for healing. You must go to a person that has faith to pray for healing. Because not every person has that faith. Or you must believe that the Holy Spirit is now with you. And that these words written in the Bible that we read is for today as well. Um, these words are for today as well. And as the Holy Spirit dwell, is poured out over this earth, the Holy Spirit hears your cries. You come to Yeshua by co coming to the Holy Spirit and Yeshua heals you. The Holy Spirit can be in your, um, will be in your room, in your car, on the streets, wherever you are coming with faith. Because the Holy Spirit is, is poured out by Yeshua. So I hope, hopefully, and, and I pray that this, this will stir hope and faith and, and courage and endurance to come to Yeshua. And maybe a hunger. Not maybe, but I want this to stir a hunger in you to reach Yeshua. If we would see today the healings and the miracles Yeshua did that time. And many of believers around the world do see them. But there are some that, that do not. My hope and my prayer is that they, will become, that they will begin to see these things. For Yeshua's words, those, those days, it is the same word this day. If we have the Bible today to learn from the Bible, that is evidence in itself that these words are for today as well. So, may these words encourage you. May these words bless you. Shalom, shalom.